<laughs> Good morning. So we're gonna do a vinyasa style practice. Um, there'll be some rounds where we'll include all of the sun salutation oriented, like the planks and all that jazz. And then there'll be other rounds that we'll skip some of those <clears throat> so that you can kind of choose either way. It'll give you some personal options in the event that you're having a tender wrist day or a tender shoulder day, that sort of thing. To start off, um, we're going to start with some core work because that's one of my favorite ways to do this. But before the core work, we're going to um, lie down on the mat and kind of hang out and breathe for a bit and kind of settle ourselves. So where I'm going to settle myself, I invite you to do the same. <laughs> So what um, I'm going to use for this purpose <clears throat> is two yoga blocks. One yoga block I'm going to put on the smallest height. So these blocks are four by six by nine. Some blocks are only two inches tall, so you can decide if you want to go for the six inch height or the smaller one, whatever that is for you. And then I like my head just a bit higher, so I'm going to take that one up. Now the block should go pretty much right underneath your upper back where your shoulder blades live. If you can do it, your shoulder blade, um, the little bottom edge of the shoulder blade is pretty close to the bottom edge of the block so that the weight of your upper back is suspended on the block. If the block is too low or up under your neck, it won't be as comfortable. So it really, it, take a moment and get it in the right spot if you're doing it. So for me, first thing is just kind of get centered. And then I might snuggle the shoulder blades in a little bit so they sort of fall onto that block. And then with the legs, you could have the feet in constructive rest, or you could stretch the legs out all the way, or you could bring the soles of the feet together, little butterfly wings if you like. I like the straighter legs about seven to eight times out of ten. Uh, <laughs> occasionally like the other ones. Um, it kind of it becomes then like more like a cobra or a fish pose upside a fish pose is closer cobra upside down but um I'm, you know this is my opportunity to kind of notice too what my sleep habits did to my shoulders overnight and kind of let go of some tension that might have developed for that reason and if you like your head a little bit more level you can turn the block down that's under your head if you don't have blocks you can use throw pillows um, or a rolled up blanket, it will work as well. more breaths. So for me the breath is just I'm just doing a deep rhythmic smooth breath not a lot of technique to it but I like the sensation of the kind of flare that the rib cage does because the block is sort of holding on to my upper back. Before I come off the blocks, I'm just going to move my arms in a variety of uh, shoulder stretches while I'm kind of here, just kind of testing out um, because I've got a little bit of space there. I'm not in on the floor with my arms, just testing out some of that space I can make. And then, okay, <laughs> making sure I wasn't going to smush anybody, roll it over so that I can take these guys out from under me. So 
then I can come back onto my back and uh, oh, just take a few moments to sort of, uh, I'm just rocking, uh, moving over the uh, area where those blocks were right between my shoulder blades. And when I, I kind of reach forward and curl my tailbone under so that I can get my upper back to really push into the ground. Oh, it feels nice. And you may or may not, like, that may not be the technique that works best for you, so you can definitely try something else. All right, so we're going to leave both feet leg on the floor for this first part. And bring your hands behind your head. The reason you've got your hands back there is so you make a little basket for your head. You're going to press your head into the basket so that the um, neck won't do the work. We're going to try to focus on this kind of upper um, center portion of the abdominals. Taking a nice big breath and then squeezing that area like you're just going to contract there right so that your torso flexes your spine flexes which curls you up a little bit and that's it that's all we're going to do for about five more rounds trying to let your head stay heavy neck relaxed and notice the tendency of to want to pull with any, the neck muscles if you've got that Do one more of these. Okay. So just kind of warming up that top center band of the abdominal. So now I'm going to warm up the sides of the abdominal. So I've got my left ankle up on top of my right thigh. I'm going to take my right elbow towards my left knee. So again, trying to make sure that the muscles are activating to do the twist. And it doesn't take much. I don't actually have to touch my knee over there to feel the muscles contracting to pull me up. I'm going to do two more of these. All right, and then while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and drop my legs over to the right. So I've got a nice twist happening. Now you could unwind the legs, you don't have to leave that foot up on top of the thigh there at all. I'm going to come on back with my exhale, bring that leg down, put the other leg up. And so again, this time my left elbow is going to move towards my right knee. So trying to feel that action of the obliques. So one side is going to activate to pull me up. The other side is going to activate to bring me back down. Seeing that on one side they're a little bit like a little more sore or tight than on the other side. I'm gonna do a couple extra rounds on this side just to give them a little bit more warmth. Maybe. <laughs> and then the twist might help as well. So taking the legs over and adjusting to the twist. <clears throat> this is you know, basically how I practice yoga in my own world is just feel for things when I notice like oh there's a little bit of tightness there or there's a little difference and I just make little adjustments so I encourage you to do the same thing and just you know trust yourself that you know what to do <laughs> or try a bunch of different things and see which one you like best
right. So I'm going to take one more big breath and then bring myself back. Oh. Okay. So we've done some little warm up work. Oh. So we're just going to take it another little notch up. Um, so this will ask more of our abdominals. You can go back to the um, initial thing that we've been doing here. Um, and again, I'm going to keep my hands in a position that uh, makes sense. So if I tend to pull with the neck, I like to keep my hands behind my head so I can press my head back. If that's not something that's an issue for me, then I could reach my arms overhead and squeeze a block between my hands. That gives a little bit of extra resistance because the block has a little bit of weight to it. And then it also um, creates a little structure, right? Because my shoulders are active and trying to squeeze the block. So it does give me a little bit of extra. So I'm going to take the right leg up. Now I could, <coughs> excuse me, um, I could take this left leg and leave it just like that foot on the ground. I could extend it out or I can lift that up just a little bit more. That's going to give me a little bigger challenge. So I'm going to take this block or my hands behind my head and twist up towards that right pinky toe and then come on back down. Okay, so you might be going to the left, it doesn't matter, just pick one. Twist it up and coming back down. And I'm mostly trying to keep my arms kind of stable with my torso. So I'm not really reaching with the arms, I'm reaching with the obliques, but the arms add that extra bit of challenge to it. I'm going to do three more. All right. So take that guy down. <clears throat> Bring the left one in for me. And then take just a moment to rinse out. So now this whole side feels a great deal warmer than it did with the last version. <clears throat> oh, and before I move on to the other side, I'm gonna do one more little um, one more little pattern of movement. So I put my hands underneath my hips. You can also put your hands down the side, or you can come back to this curling your shoulder blades up off the mat, holding your head nice and steady, and you'll hold that for the whole movement pattern. Okay, and really it depends on your anatomy and the distance between you know, the difference between the length of your torso and the length of your legs, that sort of thing, as to which of those options is going to be best for you. So we're going to take the legs straight up, kind of glue them together. You can squeeze a block between the shins. Again, that kind of helps anchor things where you don't have to do the block part. We're going to lower the legs down for four, three, two, one. Hold steady there. Keep your back level. Three, two, one, and then come on back to the center. Okay. Four, three, two, one. Squeeze three, two, one, and come back, four, three, two, one, squeeze, three, two, one, and come back, four, three, two, one, squeeze, three, two, one, and come back, we just got two more to go, four, three, two, one, squeeze, Three, two, one, and come back. Last one, you guys, here we go. Four, three, two, one, squeeze. Three, two, one, and come back. I'm gonna just drop the block. <laughs> now I can leave my left leg up there if I want to and stretch out my right leg, either hovering it or letting the foot rest. Hands behind our, your head or squeezing the block. We're gonna come up towards that left pinky toe. So we're gonna do five more of these. Last one. Or maybe there was <laughs> one more to go. I don't know. I think I counted okay. <laughs> Doesn't always work out like that, though. All right. So now, 
I'm definitely feeling a lot warmer, <laughs> a lot warmer in my core this morning and maybe some other uh, places as well. So essentially all I'm going to do is just flip myself over because we've done all this great work for the front, for the sides. Now I want to work <coughs> the muscles in my back. So flipping myself over for a cobra. All right, so I'm going to do several of these. I'm going to start with my hands spread out like a starfish. Um, pretty close. <laughs> Not quite so starfishy. <coughs> Excuse me. And then fairly high up. So they're under the top edge of my shoulder, maybe even more lined up with my jaw um, than my shoulder. And then pressing the palms down, lifting. So I'm lifting without using the arms, okay? So lifting up and then coming back down. Now, what I do with the arms is I press down to the floor and draw the elbow back. So I'm trying to broaden the front of the shoulder. And as I move my hands, that will change. Okay, so we're gonna do three in each hand position. Lift, try to broaden the shoulders. <clears throat> Lift, try to broaden the shoulders. Okay, so now bring your hands down level with the chest muscles. Press the palms into the floor. Lift, broaden at the chest. Lift, broaden at the chest. And then one more. Lift and broaden up the chest. Okay, so last hand position. For me, the bottom of my hand doesn't quite touch down, so I do a little more fingertip, but when I lift up, the pressure comes away from the wrist, so I can press down and press back, okay? <clears throat> so lifting, pulling back. And this one for me is the biggest stretch in the front of my shoulder. Okay. Now coming out of there, and I'm just gonna take a little sphinx for a moment, <clears throat> rinse out my wrists, just move them, and then stretch the fingers as wide apart as they'll go, and then kind of curl them in really tight, and then stretch them out really wide, and curl them in really tight, and stretch them out really wide, <clears throat> curl them in really tight, and then wiggle your fingers. So this just warming the wrists up. <clears throat> kind of preparing them for the down dogs and other things we're gonna do, planks, that sort of thing. Now, if your wrists are still tender, um, the first round of this, um, as we get to the vinyasa, I'll do a hands-free version, and so you can repeat that and take out some of the planks and other things that can be wrist tricky. For now, oh, we're gonna come back to child's pose, and not maybe not quite all the way to child's pose, your hips might wanna stay up over your knees here. We're gonna thread one arm underneath. So I'm taking the right arm under my left and then kind of pressing. I like to push myself a little bit into it and then push back with the shoulder. So it gives me the best stretch. You could might find that you like it better if you wrap your arm over your back. Oh, I kind of like a diagonal kind of um, pressure or um, line of stretch or movement. <clears throat> It gives me the most kind of opportunity to sort of press my shoulder back. I'm just gonna take a couple of deep breaths here. Now, this is my right hand. Um, so when I come out of this, <clears throat> my right hand's gonna go forward and my left leg is gonna go back. I'm gonna go as close as I can right into a spinal balance. <clears throat> I might need a couple of adjustments, but <laughs> essentially that's the way it's going to go. <clears throat> so I'm reaching out through my right arm, reaching out through my left leg, trying to hug in a bit through the sides of the waist. <clears throat> Giving that a nice long stretch, I'm going to bring the elbow and the knee closer together, curl up. They might even touch. You might be able to touch your forehead to your knee. Depends on how much space you've got. <laughs> okay, last one. Okay, so reaching out, I'm gonna come down. Again, take that kind of wider stance. Now my left arm is gonna thread underneath the right. And I'm gonna try to find my way into the just right shoulder stretch for me. <clears throat> I encourage you to do the same, <laughs> whatever that looks like.
gonna do two more breaths. <clears throat> and then we're gonna go right into that um, oh, spinal balance, or as close as I can get to that anyway. Oh, there it is, I'm just stretching out between those two points. Oh, and again, kind of hugging in through the sides of the waist. One more breath there, and then we're gonna curl in and stretch out, and curl in and stretch out, oh, and curl in, stretch out one more time, curl in, stretch out nice and big, and then float down. And again, <clears throat> at this point, um, you can transition um, in whatever way works best for you. So I'm gonna do some little cats, then I'm gonna take it down dog. If you wanna skip one version of this, either the cat shapes or the dog shape, <laughs> we're all gonna wind up standing at the top of our mat eventually. Now, I am a big fan of kind of taking the downward dog and making it a little liquefied. Sometimes I do it with a little wider position in the legs, sometimes more narrow. No matter what your relationship to down dog is, eventually there'll be a point where you're kind of like, yeah, we're good. <laughs> and when you get to that point, you can come out of there. Again, we're going to come to a standing position and you can take a few moments to stretch. Oh, I'm going to get a drink of water. <laughs> oh, I feel like I've needed that this whole time. Oh, and then find yourself in a mountain pose. mountain pose, not military pose. <laughs> so we're not thrusting the rib cage forward. But we do want to stand on our own two feet. And as even as we can, front to back, side to side, inside, outside, of edges of the feet, as even as we can distribute our weight. And I just like to sometimes shift it really subtly, like back into the heels a little bit, see what that feels like. Shift it forward into the toes a little bit. Shift it to the outside edge of the foot or the inside edge of the foot so that there's kind of a <clears throat> recognition of where the center is. And finding that center, just pausing for two more breaths. If I've got my eyes closed, sometimes I wobble through the <laughs> around the center point, and that's all right too. So we're going to take a nice big breath with the arms up. Big stretch. Now I'm going to shift my weight into my right leg and take the left leg into a tree pose. And you can bring your foot up onto your thigh. I'm just going to go for the calf because it's nice and easy and feels good. Oh. You can bend the knee a little bit more. You can straighten the leg a little bit more. So there's lots of space here to kind of play with your tree. If it wobbles, you catch yourself. And then picking up this left leg, I'm going to step myself back and I'm going to eventually land a warrior one shape. So it might take me a couple of moments to get myself there. Now, the thing that for me is the hallmark of warrior one is we really are just coming out of the high lunge and bringing the heel to the ground. And everybody's ankle joint is a little different in terms of how much rotation it will allow inward um, so that the toes can point more forward. Some of us are going to have to point our toes out or we're gonna wind up with knee or ankle pain, okay? So wherever your toes land, let your hip go in that same direction. Don't try to square the hip forward, it'll cause trouble for your knee. So the rib cage though is free to move, right? So we can turn the ribs forward. And what we're gonna essentially do is almost like a twist, like a warrior two, warrior one 
but we're not moving the legs, right? So we're just going to twist open like we're going towards that right side and then twist open towards the left. That feels a little more free. This feels a little bit more intense. I'm trying to hold my legs really steady as I just move through these two shapes. All right. So this is a prep round. So we're going to just step ourselves forward and pause in that mountain pose and see if we can feel a difference. Now, if I want to do the hands free vinyasa, I want to take out the planks, the down dogs, that sort of thing. Then from the standing pose, I just step forward and pause. And that's it. You just pause. You can add a chair pose to it. That's nice. So you can do something. Or you can just hold the mountain pose. Right on. So now I'm going to take the weight into the left leg. Find my way there into the tree. And then feel <laughs> kind of the inclination of wobbliness. Just try to be calm and steady as best I can in a wobbly world. Again, you can bend your knee a little bit more. You can straighten the leg a little bit more. There's some room to play. And two more breaths. I'm gonna pick up that right leg and step it back. So again, try to find my way into my warrior one as close as I can get, letting the hip go where it goes. And then I'm gonna play with the ribs, right? So I'm gonna turn towards my left and towards my right, towards my left, towards my right. Now, everybody has a different amount of rotation in the bones of their spine and sort of muscles along the side of the waist might provide resistance. So you're just working with what you got. <laughs> I have a deeper twist in one direction than I do in the other, for sure. Oh. Okay, one more of those. All right, then I'm coming back to the center. And again, I'm going to step this back foot forward into my mountain pose. Right? Well, that's the first round, and then just pausing there and seeing where it landed us. I can still feel that twisting action, so I'm just going to pause until I feel that sort of start to erase and everything in my spine becomes a little more neutral. All right, so the arms come up, nice big stretch. I'm going to grab hold of this right wrist for this first round, pulling myself over to the left. Coming back to the center, picking up this left leg, and I'm just going to try to hold it steady and hold that balance. You can even try to straighten the leg if you like. <laughs> oh. And then I'm going to pick it up again and step it back. So coming back to this warrior one for a second round. And then we're going to move the arms up, bring the elbows back, kind of squeeze the shoulder blades together, make a little bit of space, push forward, come up, back, oh. push forward, come up, back, oh. push forward. Now. We're going to take a little humble or a bowing warrior. I'm going to grab hold of my left wrist with my right hand. You can lace your fingers together. I'm turning my torso into the diagonal of with the hip and then leaving my front knee bent. So I'm going to fold forward for now, kind of rinsing out any tension from the neck. And for me, just lifting the elbows. You might take your arms all the way up over your head. Now I'm going to release my arms and I'm going to use a block for this. I'm going to put it way up. So I'm going to turn myself towards this right side. I'm turning my left toes as best I can forward and I want them to be about hips distance apart. I don't want to be on a tightrope with my feet. So I can keep my hips nice and level and kind of press my right hip back just a little bit. So I'm going to rotate towards that revolved triangle and then come out and let myself hold, okay? Lift, rotate towards the revolved triangle. I've got plants in my way, so I'm not gonna extend my arm anymore, but <laughs> same idea. Oh. So now I'm gonna kind of stick my revolved triangle, lifting and rotating there and pressing down. So I'm trying not to let my hips come into this revolve if I can help it, because I want this middle part of my back to have to do the work. If I drop my left hip, I can definitely twist more. All right, so then you can either step forward with me or step back into plank. 
lower down, do an up dog or a cobra. <clears throat> Go back to downward dog. And then when you're ready, you can step or jump up to the top of the mat. Come up halfway, fold in, <clears throat> and then return all the way to standing and find your mountain pose. <clears throat> so that's how we can kind of modify or work this together so we all get what we need out of our practice. All right. <clears throat> so taking a nice big breath, lifting the arms up. This time I'm going to grab my left wrist and go to the right. Oh, oh that feels good. <laughs> Coming back to the center, picking my right leg up. And again, maybe I do that with the leg straight so I make my quads work a little harder. I might do that for at least a little while. <clears throat> And then lifting the knee, I'm going to step back into my warrior one shape. <clears throat> Sometimes I do that more gracefully than other times. <laughs> but pressing my foot down, letting my hips go where they go. Arms come up. Elbows back. Oh, push forward. Arms up. Elbows back. Push forward. Arms up. Elbows back. Oh, push forward. All right, so I'm bringing my arms around. Last time I grabbed my left, left wrist, so this time I'm gonna grab my right wrist and then keeping my knee bent in the front, I'm folding into this kind of diagonal humble warrior. Again, you can bring the arms up off your back if you like. And one more breath there. Releasing the arms. So again, I'm gonna try out this kind of revolve triangle play here. So getting my legs nice and steady, both feet pointing forward as close as they'll go. Heels on the ground, solid base. Lifting up, so I've got a nice level back. So I want my back and my shoulders as level as I can get them. And then rotating and coming out, okay? Rotate and come out. And again, your revolve triangle may, like mine, have some restrictions in the joints that don't let you look like the girls on Instagram <laughs> or guys for that matter. <laughs> but it does not matter when it matters. I'm going to hold this one is that we're kind of finding the pose that's interesting for us. Right. And then again, I'm making note of how my right hip wants to help me and I'm trying to just center that twist in my upper back. Stay strong in my legs. Nice big breath. All right, coming out of there. Now again, you can step forward, come up halfway, lower down, hold the down dog. I mean, hold the mountain pose. Or you can step back and come forward and lower down and come into your choice of back bend. Oh. And then bring yourself back to dog. And then step forward, come up halfway. Fold, <laughs> come all the way to standing. Oh. Oh. Give everything a little jiggle. <laughs> don't, don't underestimate the power of jiggling, of pendiculating. Animals do it when they're done stretching. <laughs> they're probably onto something. And then whew, we arrive back in our mountain pose. And for me, mountain pose has kind of become a little touchstone, a place to land uh, in the midst of kind of what to me seems like just, oh, you know, we've entered a twilight zone <laughs> uh, in both world and U.S. concerns. Um, the mountain pose is just this kind of steady place to stand and pause. Feels like a nice... <laughs> A nice kind of healing balm, if you will. All right, my left hand is going to the ground. My left leg is going in the air. And then I'm gonna repeat the twist like I did with revolved triangle into a revolved half moon, okay? So <clears throat> first I'm gonna fold forward. <laughs> then putting this left hand on a block, and you don't have to use a block, you can just put it on the floor or on a piece of furniture. Reaching that left leg back and then twisting to my right. Now, it doesn't matter as much if I take my hip down in this case because I'm floating, but if I want to maintain that hip, I can, and that gives this hip more to do. 
<clears throat> now out of here, I'm going to try to step back into a warrior two, which is not, not always very graceful, but I managed. <laughs> so far, I have not broken a tooth. <laughs> so I'm going to move between the side angle, a warrior two, a moon or reverse warrior, and just try to be nice and smooth and fluid. I like fluid movement, right? I love holding poses too, but my body craves that kind of movement, which is why sun salutations are so satisfying, I think, in many ways for a lot of us. Oh. But if your body wants to hold this pose still, hold it. Pick one, hold it. <laughs> oh. Okay, I'm gonna do it one more time. Now there, I'm gonna just linger for a few moments because I love this pose. I don't fall over with close my eyes. Oh, and then I'm gonna come around, bring my toes around so that I'm a little more parallel, and then fold. Now, it might be best to have your toes point out slightly, and I am gonna do that because I'm gonna sway back and forth a little bit. But you can have your toes point forward if that feels better in your joints. So first I'm just hanging here. <coughs> And then I've just got a block on either side just for a little bit of support. I'm just gonna bend the knee on one side and let myself sort of sway that direction. And again, I've got my toes turned out just so slightly and I'm trying to keep my knee pretty close to over my ankle. I'm not going too deep here. Doesn't mean that you can't. I'm just being a little bit conservative. <laughs> All right, so coming up to the point where it feels like my back is level, I'm gonna reach my arms way out in front. This might go off camera, but I'm almost like a downward dog kind of folding in here. Oh. And then you can turn that into downward dog. You might have to spin around to the longer edge of your mat and then do a vinyasa or you can step forward and pause here with this forward bend. And so you back to downward dog, you'll just either hop or walk up to the top of your mat and join us here in this forward bend. So now my right leg is gonna lift, right? So I'm gonna keep my right hand on this block, lift my right leg up, twist. So I've got a nice revolved half moon here. And I'm reaching, kind of feeling out for my left hip, how much work it wants to do today. <laughs> Take it another deep breath. And then one more. Oh, and then I'm gonna try to step this into warrior two. That worked better on that side. <laughs> Not perfect, but better. And then take my warrior two, keeping the legs nice and steady through these little fluid movements. Moon warrior, warrior two, side angle. Oh, that feels good. <laughs> Yogi, so I'm gonna do this one more time. I'm gonna linger with the side angle because we're buds. Oh, me and the side angle. <laughs> and then I'm gonna turn this into my wide angle forward bend on the other side. Oh. I'm just putting my forehead down on my block. It may not be accessible for you. <laughs> you can certainly stack enough blocks that you can. Sometimes it just feels nice for me to make contact with the top of the head or the forehead. Oh. I'm holding for a couple more breaths here. Now we're all gonna step back into down dog with this guy. So when you're ready, you can rotate yourself back so that you're on the longer end of the mat. I'll just do that too, so it's easy to see where I'm at and what I mean, even though my mat's a circle. <laughs> and then once you find your down dog, eventually we're gonna come down to the belly. Oh. But oh, you can do 
that in your own time <laughs> if you need a few more moments. So I'm gonna do three little cobras, one with each hand position. Two, if you wanna do something different, you can. Three, I'm gonna do a little locust there. Ooh. Okay, so then I'm rolling onto my right side. Ooh. Now, we're gonna try to maintain this pose with the core. So we're gonna draw the core in. So it's just a squeezing, like it's like you're trying to draw your sides of your waist in. And then also there's a little navel action, <laughs> lower belly lift. So we're kind of holding steady. So that is an important component <laughs> of this pose. Now I'm gonna use my peace sign fingers to hold on to my left big toe with my left peace sign fingers. But you can also use a yoga strap or a towel or something if this is too far away, okay? So we're gonna grab hold either of the foot or the big toe or the strap. And then there's a tendency for my body to wanna to fall backward, right? So that's what I'm using my core to stop. <laughs> so engage the core so I stay. And if I wanna add on, I can lift this bottom leg so that I have to hover. So this is um, a, <laughs> a pose that's named after a Hindu god, Vishnu, who is the kind of calming and peaceful uh, forces of the universe. So there's a lot of upheaval when things return to kind of a, a homeostasis or a kind of peacefulness. That's the idea is that that's the work of Vishnu. And often Vishnu is depicted sleeping, like he's dreaming us. And usually he's sleeping on a couch or a little, um, like a little uh, floating bed made out of snakes. <laughs> so this is Vishnu snake couch pose is what this is. So there's the snake, like the kind of writhing part, right? We're trying to maintain with our abs. And then the snakes kind of lean over him so he has some protection from the weather. And that's our top leg. So releasing that leg. <laughs> and then I am gonna roll back onto my belly for the first version of this and just take a moment. Oh and do like a little child's posey, cat cowy kind of wobble here. So I've got to spin around the other direction so that oh, I can talk to you and not to the wall. Oh, You could though, if you have a device that you're watching on that you can just pull it around to the other side, you don't have to make this big spin. You, you can just roll over. Okay, so I've got my right hip on top. I'm gonna squeeze in from the sides of the waist. I'm gonna draw the belly in, draw the um, <clears throat> lower abdomen in. I'm gonna reach for this big toe. And again, you can use a strap or something to hold onto your foot instead of your hand. And then I'm, you know, just adding all that core work, core challenge to it, trying to maintain stability <laughs> in the writhing snake couch of the world. <laughs> <laughs> does the world feel like a writhing snake couch to you guys as much as it does to me? <laughs> I had not thought about this pose in a, at least a decade until the pandemic and then suddenly I'm like, why am I so attracted to Vishnu's couch pose? <laughs> and I think I figured it out. But in any case, it <laughs> feels like the pose of the moment. Mountain pose for stability. <laughs> Vishnu couch pose for metaphor. <laughs> Take in one more breath. Uh, and then I'm gonna release that. Now I'm gonna roll into my back, but I gotta scooch forward just a little bit. Oh. Okay. So I wanna do some little, um, these little rolly bridges. It's called Dwi Pada Pitham. Dwi is two, Pada is your foot, um, and Pitham is this kind of wave like action. Okay. So two footed wave action butt lift is basically the pose translation um, so that we know what we're doing. So <laughs> tuck it, it's not exactly right, but it's close. Tuck in the shoulders under um, and getting the feet for me a little closer for bridge than for constructive rest, right? There's like a little bit of tension on the top of my thighs um, because that's, I'm, I'm gonna use those muscles to help me lift, right? I'm gonna use glutes and then the quads are gonna let go so I can lift up. So I'm gonna lift. And then I lift my toes up off the floor. Some people come up onto the toes and take the heels off the floor, but whichever one works better for you. And then I try to get each vertebrae in my spine to touch down on the floor one at a time. So we get this kind of wave action, right? 
and it doesn't have to be super duper slow. I just find if it's a little slower, I can really feel it. So do it your pace, just lift and then wave down. And I, I like having my toes in the air because it lets me sort of shift a little side to side as needed to make space for that lower back to try to move. My lower back wants to stay like one big unit. The more movement we can get in the spine and keep in our spine, the more youthful we feel because the spine is almost all of the game when it comes to like feeling stiff and tight and tired, like other muscles too, but everything from like the <laughs> shoulders down to the hips is the, is the stuff, right? The primary area <laughs> that our whole system is designed to protect. And so if these muscles get stiff and tight, it feels, it just doesn't feel as nice and as we don't have the same sense of well-being. Okay, <laughs> long story longer. <laughs> we don't have the same sense of well-being. Oh. Okay, so I'm gonna do one more of these because if they do, oh, they just feel like the more I do them, the better they feel. So I'm gonna do one more. You can stop if you're done. And I kind of like occasionally just swing my hips around, kind of find this one vertebrae at a time positioning. And I'm like right in the middle of my back right now, like putting the weight on those bones. And now I'm getting to that little lumbar area. So trying to really control that on the top of my sacrum hips, I just let go. Around. Okay, yogis. So you have to decide like what is gonna be your kind of end pose. And I'm gonna take my legs just straight up and give them a little bit of a shake. Now you can put a block underneath your hips to create a little more of a shoulder stand, or you can do a shoulder stand if you want to. Um, I'm just doing this kind of partial inversion. Just one more chance to get kind of all the weight out of my legs, to get the lymph moving, and a little bit of rotation around the ankles here. I didn't get to my ankles until now. <laughs> it feels nice to get to them. Oh. And then when you're ready, you're, we're gonna do Shavasana. That's our next bit. So I like to have a pillow underneath my legs. Oh. So I do that. You could have like a rolled up blanket. If it's chilly at your house, it's kind of getting to be winter here although not as bad this week. Um, but if it's chilly, you can cover up with a blanket so that you're nice and toasty. I get my, like I do a couple things. I elevate my thighs because that helps my low back relax, right? So a little bit of softness at the hip flexor or the thighs slightly higher takes the pressure out of this big psoas muscle and lets my low back find a neutral place. So it's not arching off the floor, okay? little curvature under there is normal. I'm just not trying to make tunnels for guinea pigs, <laughs> although that would be cute. Um, so <laughs> then I snuggle the shoulder blades under me and I look for like, where does my arm naturally want to land, right? So relax the muscle at the front of the shoulder. See if you can let, like feel the top edge of your shoulder. See if you can let that drop backwards, right on. So for me, palms up is the way to do that. Slight bend in the elbow feels good to me. You might like a straighter arm. And then, you know, relax the muscles around your neck. So you might have to put a little pillow under your head to make it just right. Try to relax the muscles on the top of your forehead, like around your eyes, the forehead, the top of the head. Let all of that soften. Feel the orb of each of your eyeballs, right? The little eyes themselves. And then see if you can soften the muscle on the back of the eye to the point where it feels like the eye grows deeper in the socket. And then let your eyes become kinder. So it's like you're looking, even though your eyes are closed, you're looking out at the world with kindness and compassion. When we do that, we make that little mental shift. There's also notice a softening of all of the muscle there. It's actually nicer to ourselves when we're nicer to other people as well. 
something to stick in your back pocket for later. And then relax the muscles around your mouth. So you want to let your lips get super fluffy and soft. And even if you have really tiny lips, as fluffy as they can get. <laughs> and let the jaw relax so that the teeth come apart a little bit, just a little. You don't want to mess too much with the relationship of the tongue, but see if you can just let the tongue kind of hang out. Maybe the tip of the tongue touches just behind the teeth. And then let the tongue relax. And then relax any muscles in your abdomen that you're still gripping with. But don't worry about trying to make your waist smaller. Just let all that soften. <laughs> Relax your legs into the hip sockets and into the ground. Let the soles of your feet and the palms of your hands relax. A little bit more. It almost feels like the fingers and the toes kind of separate from one another. And just float here in this abyss for a few minutes. going to go anywhere but do just for a second notice your breath again and see if you can feel the breath kind of moving all the way through the body maybe even into the fingers and toes
Take a nice deep breath all the way down to your tiptoes. And let go with a really big, ah. Oh. <laughs> sigh. Sometimes I need more than one sigh. <laughs> Give yourself some little finger and toe wiggles, some wrist and ankle movement. Mm. Nice big stretch directions if you care to and then oh give yourself a hug it's nice to hug yourself <laughs> especially if you're like me and there's no one else around here to hug you just gotta hug you <laughs> uh, if you've got other people to hug hug them too as long as it, you know be safe yogis <laughs> Alrighty. so find your way eventually to a seated position, we'll take a nice big breath together. I'm really very grateful that you guys show up and join me um, in one way or another through these little digital airwaves. <laughs> nice big inhale, big sigh, <sighs> namaste. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for joining me.